Okay, good morning everybody. So, um, I wanted to uh, run through all the checkpoints um, this uh, during this class period and everything because I am not going to be available physically. Uh, so, I wanted to just get through all the checkpoints. Uh, once we get through all the checkpoints and everything, since I'll be there Wednesday, uh, we can actually just uh, run all the exercises on Wednesday, uh, and uh, and I will be available on Wednesday to get, to get you through all those exercises and everything. Uh, so um, I will get through all the uh, all the checkpoints with you uh, during this class period with a video, uh, so you can run through, uh, get get the uh, get the video, uh, go through the videos, and get all your checkpoints done, uh, so you can be good to go and ready for Wednesday uh, when we actually. Uh, uh, do the exercises. Uh, so I will run through. I will run through uh, 2.5.1 if statements, 2.5.3 using if, else, and multiple ifs. Uh, uh, 2.6.1 custom properties and 2.6.2 uh, intro to shape methods. Uh, uh, 2.6.4 is optional, but it's more shape methods. Uh, but I just I definitely wanted to get through all of this because uh, it's going to definitely help you out. Um, I know uh, Miss Stevens is going to do the uh, uh, if, uh, LF, and else, uh, but I might actually jump in and do those uh, checkpoints for you too, uh, so you can actually go through and get all the checkpoints done at least uh, and, and, uh, and be ready uh, for everything. Uh, but that is really up to Miss Stevens if she wants me to. Uh, 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 if she wants you to, to, to do those as well. Uh, uh, but starting out if statements, uh, let's do these real quick. Uh, so I'm going to run through this. So the if statement itself uh, is what we also call a conditional statement. And it's set up in such a way that, uh, that we use the keyword if, uh, and then the conditional that is set up or the condition that is set up is in these parentheses right here after after the keyword if itself and whatever's in this parentheses is basically something that you're going to have to do uh, to check to see if it is a true uh, boolean statement right so so uh, the term boolean uh, we talked about this before boolean is kind of a, a way to look at things digitally like a true or false uh, one or the other right uh, so so if uh, if stuff actually rings true, uh, you get a true statement out of that. So if your conditional, uh, if your condition for that in the, the parentheses is true in that if statement, uh, the stuff that's going to uh, be underneath will actually uh, run through. And in Python itself, it's important to note that indentation is very important. A uh, key thing about Python is is being able to indent, make sure that indentation happens, because everything that's indented underneath that if statement is going to run within that if statement itself. Uh, so it, it's going to make everything happen that's underneath that if statement uh, that that is that is indented. Uh, so looking at this first statement here, uh, we can look at it. We see that uh, the condition is if mouse x is less than two hundred. So uh, every time that we actually click on the left side of the canvas, we're actually going to make circles, uh, and then on the right side of the canvas, uh, we're not actually going to have any circles, uh, because the condition is for mouse X to be less than 200, uh, and it's going to do that that uh, that circle command right there. Uh, you know, actually make circles. So. Um, uh, this first checkpoint right here, they asked the question, if we were to change that condition, uh, mouse x less than 200 to mouse y greater than 200, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, so so if we just think about it, and, and we were to change this statement here, mouse y greater than 200, well, it was kind of uh, securing us to the left side, but now we're actually talking about the y value, so we're talking about kind of like everything uh, from the top down, right? So if we're doing greater than 200, if we had, if we kind of split the canvas in half right here, uh, everything greater than 200 would be that bottom half. So if we ran this, 
it's actually going to only put circles on the bottom half, right? So looking at that checkpoint, circles are only drawn on the bottom half of the canvas. Right there, click that, submit that, we're good to go. Uh, so now, as I stated before, multiple lines uh, of, of the if statement, like if we're making a body of multiple lines for the if statement, you got to make sure everything's indented, right? Uh, so you can see here that they've indented that. So now now we actually have uh, stars and circles on the left side, but nothing on the right side, right? Uh, so, also to note, uh, when you take your AP exam, uh, they they have a tendency to give the the exam a little bit differently than the codes actually written in in uh, when you're working in an IDE with Python itself, right? So, like I said, you got to make sure you indent. But if it's written in the exam, they're going to use these uh, the curly braces uh, just. Just so you know, so it no, it's trying to designate what the body of that if statement is, uh, which is going to look a little different. Uh, but when it comes to actually typing your code and everything, you just need to make sure that you're indenting. Okay. So we look at this, and it actually has uh, it has a part where. Uh, it's indented the circle uh, function there, but it, it ha doesn't have the star function there indented. So basically, every time that we actually click the mouse, a star is going to happen because we're not actually putting in the condition statement. Whereas uh, the circle is based on the condition itself. So everywhere we click on this campus, the canvas, we're, we're going to actually make a star, but only on the left side will we actually have circles, right? Uh, so. We look at this next checkpoint uh, and it says in the previous example what is the different now that the star is drawn uh, on the outside of, of the statement's body um, stars are always drawn yep and there you go so next checkpoint uh, we're always going to make a star uh, because it's outside of that that conditional statement so every time we click the mouse uh, it's going to draw a star, right? Uh, so we can see in this example, uh, we're going to have a counter we're still drawing stars all the time because it's it's not indented, right? But we our counter and our circles are anytime we're on the the left side and not the right side, right? So it says, in this example, what happens if we indent that last one? So if we were to take that and indent it, now it, everything's just going to only happen on the left side and nothing will happen on the right side, right? So, stars are only drawn on the left. That's the next check. Ooh, good to go. So uh, do note that anytime we're actually using an if statement, doing conditionals like this, uh, or anytime you need a Boolean result when you're doing comparisons, right? Uh, you need to note that equal to is a double equals. Uh, that is uh, that is uh, the way Python actually uses uh, a Boolean equal. You have to do two equal signs back to back. Uh, the not equal is an exclamation point and an equal sign. Uh, less than is less than equal. Normal or less than equal is less than an equal sign. Whereas less than is just less than. And the same with greater than. Greater than is just a greater than sign. And then greater than or equal is, is greater than an equal sign. Uh, so uh, one thing that they do point out is that in, uh, in the AP exam, uh, they will still denote uh, your operations uh, with with the normal signs and everything. But since in Python we can't type those types of signs, uh, we actually have to use the, the the two signs put together like it is. Uh, so we can actually uh, we can actually denote those operations right uh, to get boolean values out of that. Uh, so 
looking in this code right here, uh, this next checkpoint, what they're going to uh, ask us to do is take that double equal sign and just change it to an equal sign. Uh, but since we need to have a Boolean value here in line 10, uh, if we actually change this, uh, let me run it first so you do see that it works. Uh, so uh, as we click, uh, as soon as it equals 5, uh, then it changes the background light green. Now, if we change this double equal sign and we take away one of the equal signs, we try to run it, it's going to actually just break the code because that is no longer a Boolean value and, that, and it just causes a syntax error. So that next statement right there is a syntax error. So these next two parts, uh, uh, we have to put in some code. Now, I've already typed in uh, what needs to be typed in, whereas uh, you'll probably see on line 11 uh, that it says pass. Make sure you erase where it says pass. Uh, and then we wanted to uh, put code in here that would make sure that the counter would increase uh, if the value is less than 3, right? Uh, so you need to make sure that you're checking the the property value of of our label counter uh, that that we have designated up here on line six. Uh, so we're setting up the conditional statement if open parenthesis counter dot value. Uh, we're using that property of counter. Uh, we're checking the value of it, right? It's a it's an integer value. Uh, so we're going to check that value uh, while it is less than three. Uh, so this is giving us a true statement. We want to increment it by one. And we're using that kind of shortcut method to do incrementation. Uh, so just plus equals uh, means that it's going to increment by one. Uh, you can still type like uh, counter dot value plus one equals uh, equals uh, counter value if you want to do that incrementation that way. Uh, but it, it's a lot easier just to do the, the shortcut method of counter value uh, plus equals uh, one, uh, and that just means it's going to increment it by one. Uh, so when we run this, it's going to increment up till three, and then it's going to stop. Uh, so once you get these two lines of code, 11 and 12, uh, run your check, and you should be fine. It should pass. Uh, if you need to pause it right here, pause it, make sure everybody gets those two lines of code in there uh, so they can get through the checkpoint. Okay, so the next checkpoint is a checkpoint six. In checkpoint six, here again, I've already typed in the code of, of what it is, uh, but just note uh, what you need to do is, is it wants you to increment it every time it's in the purple area, but not in the white area, only in the purple area. Uh, so something to note about this diagonal that goes down through the middle of the canvas there, uh, that is where x, uh, mouse x equals mouse y. Uh, so uh, what we actually want to do is every time the x value is less than the y value, uh, we actually want uh, that, uh, that, that incrementation to go up. And it, it, it is saying that, uh, that it also wants the equal, so basically on the line itself as well. Uh, so uh, we write our conditional statement if open parenthesis mouse x less than or equal to mouse y close parentheses colon uh, and then we're just going to increment the the uh, property value of our counter uh, by one uh, just keep on incrementing it by one uh, so uh, enter these lines uh, 14 and 15 uh, of this code uh, into into your code there. Make sure you get rid of that pass that exists in there. Uh, you can pause the video here if you want to. And then make sure that you actually run a check on those two lines of code. You should be good to go. Uh, and now that all those checkpoints are done, we will go on to section 2.5.3 using if else and multiple ifs.